So as we said, it's a familiar story by now, isn't it? It's been going on for um, over a year at this point. Do we think we are any closer to a resolution on our rails? Well, it doesn't look like it. And the truth is, um, unless both the uh, rail operators, the train operators uh, and the government um, take the initiative, grasp the nettle and realise that there needs to be more money on the table, um, that the people within the industry, um, the trade unionists, the workers uh, who have tabled their claim um, have got a valid case, uh, then it looks like it's going to be a war of attrition and that ultimately doesn't benefit anybody. Um, so it's really important, I think, that the, the train operators and, and the government make a move on this. And how do you think public perception is at this point, Paul? I mean, people are very, very frustrated with not being able to get a train in this country. Multiple times in the past year, I was speaking to a producer out in the newsroom earlier who's, who's going to have to spend tomorrow on a replacement bus service. Do you think that people are behind these striking rail workers? Well, I think it's interesting because, I mean, I've, I've been an active trade unionist for, for many years and, and I think it's fair to say in years gone by when the RMT and other rail unions have taken strike action, it hasn't always been, let's say, universally popular, but I detect a bit of a shift in the public psyche on this. So I think that people are looking at this strike and, and these series of strikes um, and thinking, Actually, we do have a bit of sympathy with these guys, largely because I think ordinary workers out there are very much in the same boat themselves. You know, they, they are suffering as a result of the cost of living crisis. They are seeing their real wages falling year on year. Many of them are struggling to make ends meet, struggling to put food on the table, pay their energy bills, their mortgage bills and so on. And at the same time, Ellie, what these people are doing is waking up and seeing, for example, this morning, seeing the fact that NatWest, despite all of its recent problems, are posting multi-billion pound profits. They woke up yesterday and saw that British Gas uh, are posted record profits. So these banks who are making, you know, mega bucks out of the rise in interest rates, the energy companies who are making mega bucks out of the rise in people's energy bills, there's something fundamentally, I think, unfair about the state of the British economy at the moment. And when ordinary workers take strike action in order to, uh, to, to try to make it easier for themselves um, to ride the cost of living crisis, um, then I think there's quite a bit of public sympathy out of there. Yeah. Isn't it the case, though, that it's, it's tough for everyone? At the moment, most people aren't getting inflation busting pay rises. Uh, most people are feeling the squeeze of the inflation crisis that's gripping the country. And I suppose some people might think, why do these rail workers think that they're in a sort of different boat to the private sector employees who are getting on average below inflation pay rises? Well, I don't think they do think that, Tom. I don't think if you spoke to every rail worker taking strike action and said, do you think that people in the private sector should be denied decent pay increases? I don't think a single rail worker would say yes. I think they would all say, look, it shouldn't be a race to the bottom here. Actually, we're trying to, to get something. We're trying to get a decent and legitimate pay increase for ourselves. But at the same time, we also recognise that there are other workers out there uh, who are struggling at the moment. And we would defend their right to take industrial action uh, in order to improve their pay. I mean, the truth is there's, there's huge parts of the private sector that are simply not unionised at the moment. So there isn't that level of activity industrially, that, that level of action taking place. Um, but if it were to take place, I don't think you'd find a single RMT worker who would, who would condemn uh, private sector workers for that. The truth is we're living in the tightest, pay, the tightest grip on workers' wages since Napoleonic times in this country. Workers are seeing their real wages um, decrease year on year, their living standards crashing. Uh, and at the same time, particularly as a result of the pandemic, we're seeing the gap between rich and poor actually widening. And I think there's many people out there who are uncomfortable with that and saying, actually, you know, we will we will give a fair win to people who are, who are trying to fight back, including the rail workers.